Assalamualaikum. Tak mesti asli ramai tak masuk lagi. Kita tunggu. Oh, kami dua orang lagi lah. Rasul Rizal dengan Daniel lah. Uh, kalau ada ada boleh jalan je. Okay, Rasa Rizal dah masuk Daniel Waalaikumsalam Buan Waalaikumsalam Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi. Nizak, dah dia tengah dah masuk. Uh, siapa yang baru masuk, saya nak bagi tahu. Waalaikumsalam, Miss. Okay, dia dah masuk. Nak bagi tahu uh. kalau uh, siapa yang baru masuk, kalau dia, uh, grup dia, kumpulan dia ataupun uh, individu tersebut yang akan buat live presentation pada pagi ini, tolong on camera. Terlebih dahulu, wakil dulu. Mimi grup dengan Cik Azlan kan? Ya. Yep. Ha, ya betul. Ha, so Encik Azlan bagi uh, wakil, so uh, Encik Ikmal grup awak buat video ke last presentation pagi ni? Buat video? Ada sesiapa tak lagi buat last presentation pagi ni? Hmm, saya, saya. Tapi kamera saya problem sekejap eh. Saya kena ah, restart okay, kita boleh. dulu. Okey boleh. Bizek, grup kami dah masuk saya dah semua ni. Dan dia dah ah. masuk dah. Saya pun live. Oh okey. Uh, so uh, saya tak nak buang masa sebab ada first, uh, ada satu kumpulan ni dah ready semua. So you all dah boleh on camera. So for the next presenter yang akan present live lecture, so uh, live presentation, so you stand by eh. Habis group ni kita proceed dengan next presenter sebab kita tak nak buang masa orang lain, okay? Okay. Uh, eh, dia ni keluar. <laughs> uh, so Encik Azlan boleh mulakan lah presentation pagi ni. Okay. Mm -mm. Daniel, you start. Broras, prepare slide. Uh, yang okay. lain minta, uh, yang lain minta uh, on camera and also off and mic eh. Kita bagi uh, respon uh, lah, kita participate dalam discussion. Madam, uh, uh, saya punya. Lain saya ada problem, saya nak dalam satu minit boleh? Saya tukar lain, sekejap. Uh, boleh, boleh, boleh. So, uh, memang Daniel first presenter dulu ke sekejap lain? Yes, betul. Okey betul. Kami punya susunan Mizak Daniel akan present dulu followed hmm. by Mimi and then followed by me and luckily Cik Rasul Zam. Hmm. Thank you. 
Jangan lupa saya tender saya semua. Okay. So, uh, what is your first paper for this semester? Upcoming first paper, final exam. Uh, computer exam, Madam. Oh. 126 July. Oh, 26 July. Hmm. Uh, miss, I present the uh, start now. Eh? Uh, all right, you may start. Eh? Uh, we are wait for Daniel first. Uh, I present the start first. Willing to Okay. Yeah. I can see. Okay, no problem. Yes, no problem. Very clear. Okay. Okay. So we wait for Daniel dulu lah. Yeah. Hmm. Hello. Ini double check eh. You punya student ID tu betul kan? Eh, uh, Mimi dia itu nombor IT saya tu Najam oh. Yang Mimi apa tu <laughs> Oh takpe takpe Oh ada ah, dua Dapat ah, mark boleh dapat ni <laughs> Sebab saya pun cakap kenapa sama <laughs> Yang uh, Mimi that's my number uh, 5, 2, 9, 2, Mimi tolong update your number Sekejap <laughs> sekejap Takpe takpe Mimi dah inform dia malam ah. sebab dekat Rita saya pun nombor dia pun lain Betul lah cakap oh. nombor sama dah <laughs> okay. Okay, okay So Daniel Daniel Ah, hmm. uh, dia, dia dah start presentation sekarang Ah, uh, boleh boleh Kena open camera atau tak perlu? Open open Buka lah, ni cemen Oh, open Buka je Hello, good morning Alright Morning Okay Good morning, Miss Zulaika and everyone uh, Today, my group will present an human topic Number 5, type of Malaysian Constitution Guarantee the independence of judiciary and its judiciary administration. Discuss factors to ensure independence of judiciary in Malaysia as written in the Malaysian Federal Constitution. Okay, uh, basically the superior court uh, system in Malaysia has a three superior court system. Number one is the federal court as the highest court of the country. Number two, the court of appeal. An intermediary court between the federal court and the high court, and number three, high court of Malaya and the high court of Sabah and Sarawak as the lowest of the three superior courts. Uh, the federal constitution also has granted guaranteed independence and integrity of the judiciary from number one, insulation from politics. The federal constitution of the provide specific provisions to secure judicial independence from the control and interference of the executive and legislature. Uh, the second one, contempt of court. Article 1 to 6 of the constitution confers on the courts the power to punish for contempt any person who, by word or deed, interferes with the administration of justice or challenge the dignity or independence of the courts. Number three, judicial immunity. Judicial, judicial immunity is an aspect of judicial independence. In the performance of the judicial functions, all judges are immune from the law of thought and crime. So from me, 
Uh, my friend Mimi will continue her presentation. Thank you. Thank you to my team member, Daniel. So, uh, I'm chosen the jurisdiction by the Federal Constitution and Court of Appeal. So, the Federal uh, Constitution means content of the case principle to determine how a country is actually and governed as intended by law, custom, or rule generally. Accepted. Moreover, constitution relates to how, com how public decisions uh, are made, received among government agency. The constitution also sets the limit of the government authority and way of choosing and electing a government. So, the administration uh, first criteria have a power to authorize and private bodies obey the constitution and all the law. Second, the denied court, the assembly under the tribunal of H. Third, other courts, it hides from from the court and tribunal court. We have eight several responsibilities part of court, such as federal courts, court courts, Indian court, Indian court, court, the Hulu court, the Revenal court, the Indian court, court. It's a different responsible several jurisdictions. Just recently, I would like to call my team member and to Azan for his presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Miss Mimi, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning, Miss Zach. Good morning, everybody. So I would like to continue on, okay, on talking about the challenges of the judiciary system. Now, based on the challenges, I'd like to simplify it into three main topics, okay? The first thing, is the Malaysian judiciary free and independent? Next slide, bro. According to the report published by the Fraser Institute of Canada on September 28, 2019, Malaysia's judicial independence score has declined. So this report has shown decline in performance in the independent subcategory, which Malaysia has scored 6.59 points in 2014 and dropped to 6 from 6.93 points to 6.7 points. So basically, to ensure the independent body of the judiciary system is actually up to all the Malaysian citizens. So, one of the comments of the Chief Justice have made, okay, among the challenges that the judiciary will face is maintaining the trust and confidence of the people. And definitely to manage any uh, damage control when it comes to negative perception of the body, despite the fact that the judiciary system performs its role well and with full integrity. Okay, so comes to the second issue, fairness and equality for all. Does the judiciary system should suppose impose the fairness and equality for all? Next slide, bro. So if every citizen's wish to see that justice and fairness are served in a most transparent manner, especially when making a judiciary decision to solve a case or problem. So the courts need to be fully independent and neutral in carrying out their responsibilities to uphold the justice without having to feel intimidated or influenced by any other party. Now the judges also have a big role to play. They should be free and independent to devote all their energy and commitment in implementing the judicial system. Even some of the decisions that will be made will have a negative impact or maybe will be unpopular especially to the ruling government. Then comes to the third main issue of the challenges is the transparency and remain neutral. That means you are uh, on the free party, you are not sided with anybody. So basically on the transparency and neutral, next slide bro. Judges should have the courage to oppose any interference and to stick to the executive. That means they must have the courage to tell the ruling government, okay, so as not to interfere 
with the functioning of the judiciary. Okay, the judiciary crisis in 1988 in Malaysia, that is one of the example. Okay, so that definitely it has become a history and they are lost to learn from it. So the collapse of the credibility of the judicial system will erode trust to the point of destroying the public confidence in the administration of the law. Now with these three topics at all on the challenges, if the court are no longer functioning effectively to protect an innocent and save the victims, <coughs> so where else do the people want to see justice? So if the court cannot protect or uphold the rights of every citizen as per the federal constitution, the judiciary body will lose its respect and credibility as well as the confidence from the people. Eventually, the people will find other ways to get the justice implemented, thus resulting in collapse of the country's legal system, which will have definitely an impact on the country and the society. Now, to further talk about how are we going to improve these challenges, I would like to call upon my fellow colleague, Mr. Rasulizam, to present out the conclusion for the challenges in the judicial system. Over to you, Mr. Rasulizam. Okay, to you, Mr. Azlan. So, before that, we heard the problem of judiciary. Now, we take a look at how and what are the initiatives that the jury can take to be a better judiciary in the Malaysia government and for the good of the country. So, the, there are three main points that uh, we will discuss on this topic. Uh, the first one is about perceived legitimacy. So, perceived legitimacy is words. Uh, we discovered it well, from an article about uh, effective judicial selections and appointments by Judge Sanji Monaging from the International Criminal Court, ICC. So she quote, uh, the effectiveness of any judiciary uh, depends on its perceived legitimacy, especially in the eyes of the public. By this means, uh, the judiciary should uh, take caution of the public view first because it is matters uh, to the faith and trust of the public to the government administration, uh, especially the judiciary that interprets the law to the public. So the second point uh, on improved judiciary in Malaysia is to be more transparent in judgment and administration. The judiciary body should clearer about every judgment on every trial and not be influenced by other political parties or push over entities. And the third uh, point is about the appointment of the member of the judicial body. So the judicial body should be appointed directly by the Yang Dipertuan Agong without any consent from any political member. So even the Prime Minister, we're not saying that uh, we are against with the federal constitution, but it is an idea to make a better judiciary, to be more independent without the influence of others. So this, we come to the conclusion as a conclusion uh, for our presenter. Uh, the judiciary, as we know, are a part of the organs in the Malaysia government. So the hierarchy of the court are important to align the jurisdiction of every court. It is also important that ju the, judiciary, uh, of, uh, the judiciary be more transparent uh, in judgment and interpret the law without the influence of others by maintaining the credibility of the members uh, to uphold justice and peace in our beloved country. So that's all from our group presentation. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Thank you so much, uh, uh, to Daniel, Mimi, uh, Encik Azlan and also Encik Sazizam. Uh, minta buka balik slide tadi. Uh, buka. Uh, minta slide balik tadi. Tengok balik eh. Ada soalan. Q&A. Uh, uh, before, before you get question from audience, I have yeah. a question for this group. Yes, okay. Uh, ini macam uh, from your point of view lah kan. Um, hmm. It's actually our judicial system is beyond redemption. What do you think about that? Uh, beyond apa, Miss Zak? Is our judicial system is beyond redemption? Beyond redemption. Hmm. 
after all what what happened in 1988 this now is you azlan ada mention kan about mm. the history uh, back in 1988 yeah. so mm. is that our judicial uh, system uh, is beyond redemption ever since that what do you think there's no wrong or right answer i just okay. want to know the okay. opinion maybe my opinion lah uh, because uh, mm. when talking kalau dia beyond redemption maybe sebab it depends also who elected the judges mm. Okay. So kalau if the particular judges, mungkin kawan baik Perdana Menteri ke atau maybe lah kalau sedara mara menteri-menteri ke ahli politik ke apa benda Now somehow that will become to the judges it themselves uh, They going to be fair and transparent uh, Sebab kadang-kadang bila nak jatuh hukuman Then kalau yang nak dihukum tu kata anak sedara dia hmm. uh, Itulah cakap Sometimes the emotion, family emotion can come into that But in the judiciary system, law tak mengenal sesiapa. Sama ada bapa ke anak ke apa benda, you bersalah ke tak bersalah. Uh, that is how. Jadi it is up bagi saya for us, it will be up to the judges themselves how they are going to behave and act. It based on their character. Uh, jadi agak penting bila saya, when I mention, okay. So the judges will have to play the role, okay, to ensure The first thing that you become a judge or you are in the judiciary system is to get the trust from the public. Sebab benda tu adalah amanah. Yeah. Uh, so that is uh, from my point of view. Maybe my friends have their point of view. Ada yang nak tambah ke? Mungkin Encik Raz Rizam, what do you think about uh, the merit of the confidence itself? Because you talk about a lot on uh, how how this judicial system need to regain back all the people's pub, uh, people's trust, gain back the public uh, public trust. How, so, how can you explain on the, in terms of the merit confidence of the people itself, to gain back uh, this trust from the judicial body itself? Uh, just like I said before in my, uh, from my presentation, so there to be transparent and the credibility of the appointment, lah, because this mm. is the most important thing and people, public has to know Uh, what happened mm. to the city and uh, uh, and take credit of uh, public appointment because this is how we govern the public. So public have to know everything about the government. So it is even for the transparent and appointment. Dila? So meaning that uh, if if the uh, if the peop- uh, if the public need to know what what happened uh, what happened behind the I mean behind the curtains of the judicial body. It yes, doesn't mean yes, that, that it means that uh, you are agreeing that judicial body in Malaysia should not be uh, independent itself. No, I mean it is. I would agree with the independent judiciary, but uh, at the same time, uh, the judiciary have to show uh, not mm-hmm. everything, but some of the judiciary about the transparency on the judiciary. But public have to gain also gain knowledge about the judiciary itself because cannot just uh, the judiciary body cannot give any, anything but ju- the public mm. uh, didn't understand what what happened to the judiciary because sometimes some things like uh, about the court like uh, and the apa ni dia punya istilah-istilah tu kan dalam uh, the, the the law mm. uh, istilah dalam dalam uh, undang-undang tu Some of the public didn't understand, so mm-hmm. it is the gain. It is the responsibility also mm-hmm. to gain knowledge about yeah. the law. So it uh, between the public and the judiciary should take the uh, mm-hmm. the part lah. Uh, I got the point, eh, Mister Azizam. Mm. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Mm. So main point ni dekat sini memang uh, judicial body kita tahu badan kahkiman ni tugasnya adalah untuk me uh, translate eh untuk uh, translate me, uh, translate uh, sebab uh, segala uh, undang-undang lah dekat Malaysia ni so supaya uh, rakyat semua tahu kan apa undang-undang dekat Malaysia ni so macam Cik Razizam kata mungkin disebabkan kekangan dari segi bahasa tu legal term tu tersendiri so mungkin tak semua rakyat uh, memahami kan konten isi undang-undang Malaysia tu, uh, dalam Malaysia tu tersebut So, so that's idea, all from, uh, from me. Ada question tak from uh, audience? Semua okay. Ini Jazlan? Oh, semua okay. 
Any questions? If they don't have any questions, we give the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, Miss. Miss, no, semua okay. Presentation orang semua okay. <laughs> Uh, kalau boleh tanya soalan yang you rasa macam uh, you ada ada bukanlah I mean like bukanlah uh, curious tapi untuk exam nanti sebab please bear in mind nanti dalam exam dia tak akan keluar soalan dalam slide so saya rasa macam uh, presentation untuk kumpulan ni sangat penting especially yang untuk bahagian uh, Encik Azlan dan juga Encik Razizam bahagian challenges tu dengan bahagian the solution tu So mungkin kalau you all ada yang uh, you all tak faham tu so you all boleh tanya lah. Hmm. Lepas silakan. Hmm. Ada yang nak tanya? Tak ada eh? So Cik Azlan macam mana? Tak ada question from the audience? Only from me? Hmm, I tak ada apa ni. Tunggu je. <laughs> My friends, okay. Daniel, Mimi. Okay, okay. Ada apa-apa? Okay. Anything? That's all. Ada apa-apa eh? Alright. Ada short from us. Hi, Dan. Tak ada apa-apa eh? Tak ada. Alright, thank you so much uh, for all the presenters. Um, saya sangat berpuas thank hati you. sebab uh, menjawab soalan eh, and then dia providekan kita dengan solution tadi. So itu uh, uh, memang uh, memang <laughs> memang saya puas hati lah. But I was about to ask the same question. Then you said uh, Encik Rasizah makan bagi tahu about the solution. So okay, dia dah menjawab satu soalan lah. So tak ada soalan eh semua. Thank you. Terima kasih dengan next presenter. Thank you so much. Uh, Encik Adlan, Encik Razizam, Encik Daniel dan also Encik Nini. Pardon? Okay, kita move on ke next presenter. Next presenter yang akan buat live presentation. Saya ke? Okay. Cekal bu boleh buka slide tak? Eh, Cekal tak. Sekejap, sekejap. Hmm. Nampak tak Madam? Boleh dengar. Ah, kuat sikit boleh tak cekal? Ah, nampak slide. Slide nampak. Betul. Ha -ha. Tak apa. You tak nampak. You pun tak apa. Nampak slide pun okey. Tak nampak saya pun tak apa eh. Sebab saya punya internet tak tahu lah. Kat rumah dia macam bingung sikit. Okey. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi okay. wabarakatuh. Today uh, I would like present the absolute monarchy which mean the uh, the question number one. Uh, the absolute monarchy. Why absolute monarchy? That uh, I feel that uh, why I choose the absolute monarchy because of uh, I feel that right now uh, the situation politics in Malaysia, the situation politics is in the world, especially on this country, uh, on country that have a absolute monarchy is very very 
uh, charitable. Uh, something like uh, not all the Australian monarchy country, but uh, something like uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, and others. Uh, and Malaysia is not categorized as absolute monarchy because of uh, we have a limited monarchy actually. Okay. Uh, for for all, uh, we must know about the monarchy itself. They originally uh, from the Greek, great uh, apa nama dia tu? Great name, oh, bukan great name. Kataan, a mid single one or the rule of one. Okay, absolute monarchy kita boleh refer as a to form of a government who political power is held by one super leader. As we know that kalau kita tengok dekat Brunei contohnya uh, Absolute monarchy dekat sana kita tengok Sultan Hassanah Bokiah yang mentadbir negara tu secara keseluruhan. Maknanya the 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 the, the time is uh, the all of thing maknanya yang jadi pada keluar, keluar negara and so on is uh, their family only. And uh, kalau kat sana uh, Sultan Hassanah Bokiah lah yang menjadi uh, ketua negara, dia lah jadi pada menteri dan sebagainya. Kalau kita tengok pula pada uh, let me say uh, about uh, the Vatican City. Uh, I love the Vatican City because of why? Vatican City ni uh, satu negara yang tak ada tentera sebenarnya. Uh, and uh, dia adalah absolute monarchy because of why? Uh, dia ditakbir oleh Pope. Uh, tak ingatlah nama Pope dia apa tapi Pope lah. Uh, Pope tu adalah ketua gereja kat sana. Lepas tu uh, another thing is uh, nanti kita akan pergi uh, more further kepada uh, Saudi Arabia and kita tengok Selim Raki ni ada pro and cons dia eh. Okay pro dia kita so uh, the strength is decision on on the nation administration and welfare can be made and implement immediately. Uh, which mean kalau diorang nak buat apa-apa, diorang tak payah nak tunggu ahli politik ni berbincang uh, nak, nak apa, nak tunggu uh, masuk dari luar rakyat, nak bincang tu gini 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 tak payah. Diorang just terus uh, keluar ke arahan and terus uh, lakukan je. Macam dekat uh, dekat Saudi Arabia yang diorang uh, bagi buka disko. So diorang tak payah nak tunggu uh, keputusan rakyat kata sebagainya. Diorang terus cakap okey uh, boleh buka uh, boleh buka disko lepas tu boleh bawa uh, perempuan boleh bawa kereta kat sana so uh, itu kat sana dia tak perlu nak menunggu uh, ahli-ahli politik ini untuk berbincang berlainan pula dekat Malaysia yang kita masuk uh, dekat dewan rakyat uh, contoh nak buat-buat apa-apa undang-undang sekalipun kita perlu bawa masuk dewan rakyat Ah uh, ini kalau kalau the Excel Monarch ni dia orang bincang dalam kalangan dia orang je dalam kalangan family untuk uh, ada dalam kalangan raja-raja tu untuk diberi uh, kuasa untuk bertakbir negara. Lepas tu uh, policy that uh, secondly is a policy that can be implement within a given period of time usually in a long period. Okay. Uh, dia polisi dia boleh implement dalam masa adalah sesetengah masa dia tapi selalunya lamalah polisi tu macam polisi uh, membawa mak, apa banyaklah polisi-polisi polisi haji sebab uh, kalau macam dekat Saudi Arabia ni polisi hajinya dikawal selir oleh uh, keluarga diraja uh, macam tu lepas tu ruler has a lot of power and stable position so ki, kita tak boleh deny benda ni kita tak boleh deny negara-negara yang ada absolute monarchy ni as a ruler, diorang memang banyak power and diorang memang banyak position, diorang memang position dia sangat-sangat-sangat stable. Kan? Apa yang berlaku dekat, uh, tapi yang menarik yang berlaku dekat Saudi Arabia ni bila uh, King Abdul Aziz, uh, arwah King Abdul Aziz ni meninggal dunia uh, anak dia ambil take over which means King Salman. And the uh, and the crown priest king Muhammad uh, bin Salman uh, al Saud ni dia dia, dia naik uh, jadi crown priest dia overrule uh, pak cik dia turun tata dia naik 
Lepas tu uh, waktu tu lah banyak krisis uh, yang keluarga-keluarga dia ni ramai yang kena uh, sebabkan orang kan banyak power kan. So keluarga-keluarga diraja ni uh, ramai yang kena tangkap dan di uh, bukan di, uh, dan dibicarakan lah disebabkan kesalahan-kesalahan mereka. Tapi penjara orang sangat-sangat-sangat heaven. Hotel Five Star macam Hotel Five Star semua ada kelekapan kat sini cuma orang duduk kat dalam istana yang tak boleh dorang keluar itu je. Kita tengok pula weakness of the weakness of the absolute monarchy. Okay kalau kita tengok uh, weakness of the absolute monarchy kita uh, memang rakyat kat sana uh, siapa-siapa kat sana memang tak ada uh, freedom of speech. Sebab orang uh, kalau kalau kita tengok raja-raja yang dulu lah raja-raja yang dulu pun Uh, orang punya kalau kita cuba tentang raja, kita kata uh, raja buat salah Contoh macam kita tengok pada zaman Mesir dulu uh, Mesir adalah uh, uh, Fir'aun dulu adalah excellent monarchy So uh, kita tengok memang waktu tu kalau uh, you adalah rakyat ke Ataupun pembesar sekalipun kalau ki, dia uh, canang je terus hilang Maknanya dibunuh ke ataupun di eksekusi ke uh, terpulang pada uh, uh, raja nak buat apa. Tu so, memang tak boleh lah. Lepas tu credit with the principle of uh, severity and democracy. Memang orang tak ada lah. Uh, orang tak ada prinsip dengan uh, demokrasi lah sebab actually orang uh, lebih kepada kuasa orang lah. And no po- uh, no control of the monarchy power. This actually concept and actuality. So uh, kalau kita tengok yang zaman-zaman dulu uh, dia orang memang agak uh, kalau ikutkan memang agak uh, sangat-sangat power sampai sekarang pun actually uh, kalau dekat kalau kat Brunei tak adalah sangat macam tu tapi kalau dekat uh, Saudi Arabia ya yeah, masih lagi masih lagi uh, macam tu juga uh, dia orang punya power ni tak ada tak ada control tau Uh, diorang boleh tahan siapa-siapa, boleh uh, boleh jatuhkan hukuman pada siapa-siapa, uh, macam tu. Tapi yang 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 menarik dia, uh, saya boleh lihat benda ni berlaku juga kepada Korea Korea Utara. Apabila uh, Korea Utara ni walaupun dia dia komunism, dia bukan dah monarki, tapi uh, konsep dia tu ada. Konsep dekat Korea Utara tu ada. Dekat uh, apa? Uh, ambil part of uh, monarki monarki tersebut. Ha. So kalau kita tengok uh, uh, orang Korea Utara ni, orang tak boleh nak lawan uh, pemimpin orang kena ikut arahan. Even style rambut ni pun ada lelaki, ada style dia sendiri, perempuan ada style dia sendiri. Itu yang itu yang berbeza, uh, itu yang uh, kalau komunisme kat Korea Utara ni ada uh, ambil sikit-sikit lah actually monarki ni. So kita boleh tengok the examples of the uh, monarchy Okay, example of the monarchy uh, Kita boleh tengok, uh, okay kita ada Saudi Arabia eh. Saudi Arabia kita tengok uh, pem, uh, dia punya king is a King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud uh, Previous dia adalah King Abdul Aziz lah Kan, uh, lepas tu uh, Crown Prince dia dulu uh, Tak silap saya su- Sultan, Sultan apa tah uh, nama dia lah uh, uh, Sultan bin uh, Abdul Aziz tak silap uh, tapi uh, diturun ke tahta dinaikkan pula uh, Muhammad bin Salman Al Saud iaitu anak kepada King Salman bin Al Saud kita boleh tengok sebenarnya uh, anak dia sangat berpengaruh eh sebab uh, Crown Prince ni dia yang uh, banyak uh, dia antara orang-orang yang Sebenarnya uh, menyat, dia banyak membuka mata uh, kebebasan kepada wanita macam tu. Tapi dia juga uh, ada membuat koblerasi bersama dengan US, uh, United States of America, uh, menyokong uh, Israel and so on lah. Uh, dia ada di situ. So uh, kita boleh tengok dekat ni description, uh, constitution follow basic of uh, of Saudi Arabia and Al-Quran lepas tu governor uh, king function sebagai uh, executive, legislative and judiciary maknanya king ni dia ada tiga kuasa 
iaitu dia boleh uh, dia jaga pali ada uh, jadi member of cabinet kalau katakan Malaysia ni member of cabinet lepas tu legislative dia jadi member of parliament lepas tu uh, judiciary uh, dia jadi hakim ah uh, macam tu tapi administration ni uh, bukannya bukannya king seorang jelah uh, tapi dia adalah uh, bawa-bawa dia is a royal family lepas tu dia ada ulama yang ikut uh, ada sikit-sikit dengan religious leader sebab uh, negara Saudi ni ada religious leader and uh, negara lain yang di dirantau sana adalah antara yang negara yang saya uh, suka tengok adalah ialah UAE. Kenapa UAE? Sebab UAE walaupun orang uh, menggunakan absolute monarki dan orang uh, bertukar-tukar uh, pemimpin uh, mengikut kawasan uh, ada setengah waktu tapi uh, negara orang membangun dan uh, naik dengan sumber petroleumnya dengan uh, uh, negara yang sangat uh, maju dengan pesat lah dengan penyagaan dia. Okey, uh, ini adalah uh, sample uh, contoh dia Sultan Brunei dengan Port Baptist City. Uh, itu sahaja saya punya hari ni. So, uh, thank you so much to Syekal. Uh, Syekal jangan tutup slide eh, dulu. Biar stay dulu. So, sebelum audience bagi question saya nak uh, nak tanya lah. So, what okay. can you give me one challenges? Uh, I, I have one question. Can you give me, uh, okay. can, can you provide me one challenges uh, of uh, absolute monarchy? whichever uh, any country lah atau uh, any country lah yang you state tadi kan you bagi example tadi ada tiga country kan you bagi Brunei, you bagi Saudi Arabia, you bagi Vatican City so you boleh choose any country, any any country from that three countries and then give one challenges hmm. absolute monarchy. Okay, uh, I will choose the, I will choose the, uh, the challenges. One one day. Uh, satu je, satu je eh. Uh, I will choose the uh, three yang sebenarnya ada um, adalah Saudi Arabia lah. The challenges is because uh, challenges dia adalah uh, orang nak nak cakap bahasa Inggeris ke madam? <laughs> eh miss? Okay. Uh, the challenges pun tak apa. Okay eh. The challenges is uh, Orang cuba nak rapas negara dia. Because of why, the absolute monarchy ni kalau dia punya challenges ni uh, rakyat senang memberontak sebenarnya. Rakyat senang memberontak kalau tidak tidak suka kepada sesebuah negara. Uh, sebuah peraturan dan sebagainya. Maknanya kalau dia tidak tidak langsung uh, mana, kalau tak menyokong, uh, rakyat tak menyokong apa peraturan yang dia buat. Uh, itu memang sangat-sangat crucial lah sebab dorang yang uh, buat peraturan, dorang yang buat, uh, dorang yang jatuhkan hukuman, dorang juga yang uh, melaksanakan hukuman. So, itulah challenges yang dorang akan uh, akan hadapi uh, dan negara, negara luar ni akan memberi tekanan kepada mereka uh, untuk perkara tersebut. And so, uh, kalau ada, tapi uh, dekat, dekat Dekat uh, Saudi Arabia ni masih lagi terkawal and tak ada lagi, tak ada lagi uh, mungkin ada mungkin tak ada saya tak berapa pasti tapi uh, selama pembacaan saya uh, belum lagi ada lagi sebarang rusuhan yang terlalu besar terhadap uh, uh, terhadap king dia tapi memang ada, ada, ada propaganda yang saya ada baca ada juga propaganda yang nak jatuh king dia everything tapi susah sangat sangat susah Nah, itu dah. Okay, terima kasih Syekal. So, saya jawab balik eh soalan awak. So, sebenarnya absolute monarchy ni, kita dengar perkataan monarchy ni kan. Monarchy ni kita kata dia, um, it is a divine from the God. That's why lah uh, Syekal kata tadi dekat Saudi Arabia, rakyat dia tak menentang. Sebab ni apa? Sebab ni king ni, absolute monarchy ni merupakan um, uh, wakil Tuhan. So, kalau you menentang king ni, it, Uh, dia ibaratkan like you rebel against, uh, you rebel and you against the God. So that's why uh, macam you cakap tadi kan uh, dekat Saudi Arabia tak ada lagi uh, rusuhan yang menentang uh, kerabat, uh, kerabat-kerabat raja mereka betul tak? So 
sebab, uh, sebab uh, seharusnya eh, uh, you punya first kali eh, dalam slide you, you perlu introduce sejarah mana datang absolute monarchy ni. So sebenarnya macam mana absolute monarchy ni boleh boleh come in the history because of the fall of the church. Uh, bila kejatuhan church eh, waktu uh, dekat Europe lah tahun lidah uh, tahun uh, Uh, memang sebelum-sebelum ni lah. So waktu kejatuhan uh, uh, gereja dan tu, itu tentulah absolute monarchy come into place, come into the picture. So on the first way you should uh, actually uh, cerita dekat kita sejarah macam mana absolute monarchy hmm. ni come into the picture. So baru kita boleh nampak uh, the flow lah. Oh rupanya absolute monarchy ni dia merupakan macam wakil, uh, wakil Tuhan lah. Uh, wakil Tuhan. So messenger, messenger of the God. That's why uh, people cannot against them. So uh, due to apa kata the fall down of the church so uh, kat situ lah absolute monarchy datang uh, come into the picture. Mereka ambil alih. Uh, so macam you cakap tadi uh, uh, macam South, uh, South Korea pula. Pada North Korea tadi tu itu kita kata dengan feudalism. Dia tak macam uh, dia tak macam monarchy kan tapi dia macam ada monarchy sikit. Itu kita kata dengan feudal. Hello, dengar tak? Dengar, dengar. Dengar. So, ada apa-apa soalan tak daripada audience tentang absolute monarchy? I have one question. Tuan Syekha. Oh, okay. Hmm. Alright. Just now you mention, okay, just one uh, facts clarification about Saudi Arabia hmm. just now. Okay, when you say, okay, part of the what? Okay, the crown prince say the support Israel. The support Israel in what? Because on my knowledge, okay, when you're talking about the Arab countries, only three countries, three Arab countries have the diplomatic relation with uh, Israel. That is Egypt, Jordan, and recently UAE. So, dekat mana yang Saudi Arabia ni, you say the Crown Prince supporting Israel. Because that's what I know, Saudi Arabia is one of memang paling anti-Israel. Walaupun dia baik dengan US. Bila cakap pasal okay. Israel, jangan harap lah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Encik Aslan, dia macam ni sebenarnya uh, benda ala ni crucial tau benda ni. Uh, dia benda ni agak uh, cerita dia uh, kenapa saya kata uh, Saudi Arabia ni ada part of uh, support Israel walaupun dia sebenarnya tak support. Doras ni sebenarnya uh, in term of uh, in term of this sebenarnya dorang tak nak Orang tak nak masuk campur dengan apa yang berlaku dekat dekat negara-negara dekat negara Israel tu and orang tak nak uh, jatuh uh, tak nak uh, potong hubungan dengan uh, US. Tapi uh, benda ni orang selalu di uh, menunjukkan sebenarnya uh, menunjukkan sebenarnya Saudi Arabia ni lebih menyokong Israel apabila Israel cuba menentang Israel cuba menentang Uh, negara waktu Palestin hari tu uh, menentang cuba menentang uh, waktu Israel cuba um, berperang dengan Palestin hari tu kan tapi Saudi Arabia tak ada buat apa-apa so uh, uh, orang cakap uh, Saudi Arabia dia sangat uh, orang tak ta, ta, apa ni katakan uh, Uh, sangat menyokong Israel. Uh, kira, kira kira macam menyokong dalam diam lah macam tu. Uh, tak ada nampak macam menyokong dalam diam. Tapi uh, walaupun hakikatnya secara terang-terangan tak ada. Uh. No, I think is that is just an assumption. There's not, hmm. no, there's not no proof about uh, the sokongan tu dekat yeah, no proof. At least you have, kalau you have the supporting data tu, then you can apa lah. Where do you get the information Just to? Because, uh, oh. For me, as my opinion, because Israel is uh, have a geopolitical uh, relation with US. So, Mesir ni, dia ada, dia ada geopolitical uh, hubungan geopolitik dengan juga. Jadi, orang terikat dengan US sebenarnya. Kalau dalam pemikiran saya lah, orang terikat dengan US. Hmm. Tapi, ada kan dari Mesir juga masa tu, uh, OIC dia menentang uh, apa ni dia menggunakan pertubuhan apa ni OIC tu ya, macam dia tentang selesai macam Mesir dia lost the war, Sinai Peninsula uh, tu dia lost pada Israel tahun 1967 that is how, nowadays that is how we hmm. kecam orang bukan nak 
asal sokong kita bagi bagi senjata dekat negara lain jadi kita sokong tak ada kita uh, cara sekarang berperang menggunakan tekanan daripada negara-negara lain tapi at the same time hubungan diplomatik tu tak terjejas macam tarik tali dalam eh tarik apa ni rambut dalam tepung uh, tarik rambut uh, dalam tepung ha uh, tarik rambut dalam tepung ha <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, tarik rambut dalam tepung that's my opinion lah Hmm. Alright, thank you so much for the question and also thank you so much for uh, Shekal. So, saya hmm. naip up. So, basically uh, macam mana eh, monarchy ni boleh come to the picture uh, back in the history because number satu, because the loss of power, uh, loss the power, the fallen of the church lah due to reformation. Itu nombor satu. Nombor dua, because of uh, violences. Makin lama makin, uh, makin lama makin banyak keganasan. That's why lah Uh, monarki ni sangat penting. Sebab apa? Kita kata monarki ni adalah the God's divine kan? Dia merupakan orang orang perantaraan uh, antara Tuhan dan juga rakyat. And last kali due to the growth of the modern countries. So king tu adalah merupakan simbol kekuatan uh, pada sesebuah negara. So um, kalau kita nak faham lagi eh, lebih uh, lebih orang kata apa lebih detail tentang uh, absolute monarki ni kan? you boleh tengok movie Lion King. So kalau you tengok movie Lion King tu kan, yang tiga, uh, tiga watak karakter tu, um, uh, uh, King tu, uh, the King, uh, singer tu anak dia dengan yang dia punya lagi satu watak tu, friend, uh, dia friend tu. So itu you boleh, kalau you tengok lah, you akan nampak absolut monarchy dalam tu. Tapi in, uh, tapi tak adalah nampak secara direct. Cuma you boleh kaitkan lah dengan teori absolut monarchy. So, um, thank you so much, Eka, presenter and also a question from the audience. So, can we move on to the next presenter, please? Next presenter. Can I present Mrs. Zulaiha? Ah, yes. Uh, yes. Can ask. Boleh, boleh. Boleh. Okay. Yeah. Sekejap ya, saya nak Boleh Sekejap ya, saya nak Boleh Yang ni? Apa yang Boleh, boleh, boleh Sekejap ya Boleh, boleh Mana? This one? Yang tadi tu Share, share, share. Okay. Share, share. 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 Tak nampak, tak nampak. Okay. Audience nampak tak? Tak nampak. Tak nampak. Tak nampak lagi lah kan. Tak apa lagi. Sekejap. Wah. Sekejap mana? Sekejap ya. Nampak tak? Sekejap. Dengar loading. Uh. Tak nampak eh? Tak keluar eh? Uh, tak keluar. Uh, uh, Puan dekat bawah tu kan dia ada satu ikon tu dia ada yang uh, empat uh -huh. segi box lepas tu arrow duduk atas box dalam tu. Sekejap ya. Uh, boleh boleh. 
Ataupun nak email okay. saya, saya akan presentkan. Okay, uh, dekat mana box mana? Present now uh, kan? Dekat bawah tu kan, dia ada satu box. Lepas tu uh, arrow tu ke atas. So, one click dekat icon tu. Ah, okay ni ha, present ah, uh, present ah. Uh, uh, Puan kita uh, yang uh, window tu, a window, share a window. A window, okay. Okay, sekarang ah, uh, Puan klik dekat slide, slide presentation. Ah, uh, ada. Uh, tak keluar. Ah, oh, tak keluar. Ah, uh, tak apa Puan As, Puan As, izin dekat saya, saya tolong pilihkan. Ah. Uh. Danta. Saya Danta. Miss Zaika, saya Danta dah. Tak ada. Uh, Puan Aras, saya tak dapat. Saya tak diisi. Hello? Hello, tak diisi ni. Kejap saya pergi. Ah, saya tak diisi dah kan? Haa.
uh, Puan Az uh, boleh tak kita proceed dulu dengan presenter uh, yang lain? Sementara tunggu Puan Az untuk present. Okay, okay, proceed. Uh, yang lain lah. Okay. 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 Okey kita nak panggil a uh, Cik Nia untuk present. Ada tak? Okey. Cik Nia minta minta a uh, ni eh, buka slide ya. Mia okey tak Mia? Okey tak? Ah, Nia. Slide awak hilang. <laughs> Dengar suara saya eh? Sebab saya tak Saya dengar suara putus-putus dia Dan video saya Saya nampak semua orang Saya dengar suara Agak perlahan Boleh ha? dengar Saya boleh dengar Haa Saya dengar kan Saya dengar juga ha. Saya boleh dengar clear Boleh dengar Boleh dengar Haa mm -mm. Minta share slides ya. Okay, Assalamualaikum and good morning. My name is Tuan Salmiya. Saya, saya dah share screen saya. Ada, ada, ada minyak, minyak. Ini 
saya share dah share screen ni. Um, cuba unpin awak punya profile. Mia ni ah Mia email dekat saya boleh tak slide? Tak ada lah. Tak ada lagi ni lah. Tak keluar. Okey tak apa. Uh, Mia kita uh, bagi laluan dekat Puan Az dulu eh. Boleh tak? Awak awak email dulu awak punya slide. Boleh eh? Okey. Uh, Puan Az tembak eh. Tak ada yang nak pilih kan. Okey. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to all. Okay, my presentation for this morning for our uh, subject P8240 is regarding topic 4. Legislative body is the most important branches of government as its function to create law in country. Discussed by camera system as practice in Malaysia. Uh, discussion should provide information regarding membership, appointment and termination, termination and issues. Okay, uh, the, among the, uh, the, the, the contents of my assignment is on introduction and function, uh, functions of legislature, uh, types of legislature, uh, by camera system as practice in Malaysia, discussion issues, uh, conclusion uh, and at last conclusion. So uh, I go to uh, introduction first. Okay, definition about this uh, leg legislation is according to Cambridge uh, English Dictionary means uh, a set of rules mm -hmm. or laws relating to particular activities activity that are suggested by a government and made official by a parliament. Legislation is a type, uh, uh, type of representative deliber de deliberative assembly with the power to create, amend and substitute on replacing the existing law or po policies. Legislation is regarded as uh, one of the three organs uh, in the government, uh, often uh, distinguished under doctrine of separation of power. Uh, the uh, sorry to interrupt. Ya, yeah, sorry. Uh, tapi slide tak ada, tak keluar dekat. Ah, yes, yes. Oh, ni, I tak, I tak ni. Uh, only uh, the oh, tak start cover lagi. the cover. No, no, only the cover, in front, front cover only. Because I tak sempat oh, nak cover. buat semua. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. okay, 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 right. 
Okay, okay. Uh, legislation uh, also uh, actually uh, the sub, uh, occupies the superior function uh, uh, among the uh, 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 executive, uh, executive and judici uh, judiciary, judiciary. Sorry. Okay. Uh, actually, legislation uh, transform uh, the demand of people into uh, authoritative laws or statutes now. Okay, I go to the brief history of the legislative. Uh, actually, uh, legislative is a uh, uh, order, uh, is order, uh, is process uh, order than executive and judici judiciary. This, um, uh, the history of legislation, uh, legislative body uh, is uh, resembles widen uh, resembles widen legislation does not be, uh, begin before 17th century okay discussion on the, the legislative uh, was interpreted by aristotle uh, but uh, his focus uh, is read uh, more towards a philosophy rather than legislative process Okay, uh, go, uh, go to structure. Structure of legisl uh, legislature is different from uh, one nation to another. Uh, looking back uh, at our Malaysian history, the initial uh, structure of legislation uh, in the past through uh, uh, actually uh, through absolute monarchy that controls the executive power, legislative power, and also the judiciary body. Uh, but uh, 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 starting the uh, era of coloniz colonization of British start, uh, in uh, 1874, when British uh, signed uh, the Panko Agreement with Perak uh, by giving the uh, British uh, power to advise state authorities. During the colonial era, the institution of leg uh, legislation was initially established uh, in 1867 when the Straits uh, Settlement Legislative Council was instituted following the transfer of the Straits Settlements of Penang, Singapore, Malacca and Malacca from East the English uh, East India Company to colonial office. Even though the British colonial government permitted uh, the forming of uh, legislation, legislative council for Malay Malaya, Singapore, Sab uh, Sabah, Sarawak, the Street Settlements Legislative Council is still have to report to the British High Commissioner. The Legislative Council uh, was first institution uh, was the first institution in the country, which uh, carries the mandate to debate and, and discuss matters entrusted with lawmaking uh, for the sake of the colony. Then, uh, this is the characteristic that we see uh, in modern Parliament. Uh. Okay, uh, in 19, uh, 1896, the uh, independent Malay state of Kuala, Selangor, Paha, and Negeri Sembilan uh, had formed a federation collective known as a Federated Malay State. The Federated Malay State led formation uh, on uh, the federal, federal system government. Uh, which uh, entity operated separately to pass their own legislative uh, legislation respectively. At that period of time, uh, there is no legislative legislative body to formulate and regulate laws as a whole entity, but uh, because they are uh, 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 only each of the identified states only. However, in 1909, the Federation Council acting as central legislative body uh, that was formed under Federated Malay States act as, uh, as a forum in which 13 uh, members consist of Malay rulers, uh, 
four Malay ruler, ruler sorry, the British resident general, four British uh, resident officers, and four unofficial members uh, the, uh, discussing matters pertaining to administration of the Federated Malay States. Uh, it is a forum where uh, the uh, which the advisors of uh, Malay rulers was sought before the British uh, administrators went ahead to implement uh, policies. Uh, uh, unfortunately, this coalition uh, of uh, legislative body did not last long. Uh, whereby four Malay rulers withdrew in it. 1927 and leaving only 11 members carrying out their duties until the second world war in december 1941 triggered the and then comes uh, the uh, emergence of uh, japanese oc occupying the uh, malay uh, state uh, uh, between 1942 to 1945, causing deferment of the constitutional development. Soon after, the uh, Japanese uh, surrendered to British in 1946. British had, had formed uh, an advisory council with uh, the, uh, 30 members representing the Malay states and uh, two straight settlements, Malacca and Penang. Then uh, British tried to unite the uh, the three system of administration, uh, the Federated Malay States, Unfederated Malay States, and also the three settlements Malacca and Penang through um, uh, through Malaya Union. Malayan Union was uh, greatly uh, opposed by the Malays, led by the uh, Dato uh, Allah Yarham Dato On Jafar who was the president of United Malays Organization, uh, National Organization is of no. You know, uh, Malayan Union had actually deprived the institutional Malay rulers uh, on several, uh, on several tier. Okay, uh, uh, and then I go to, uh, because uh, the resisting, uh, resistance against the Malay Union, eh? had resulted uh, Federation of Malaya Agreement uh, being executed uh, between the Malay royal rulers and uh, Sir Edward Gent, who is the representative for British government in 20, uh, 21st January 1948. The, the Federal Legislative Council was established to replace the Federal Council at the federal level, uh, this one then uh, it then uh, drew the members from all member states lah. Not too long after that, the federal federal legislative council became the federal parliament, and the first election to the uh, parliament was held in nineteen fifty five. The first election formally uh, 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 in nineteen fifty five. Sorry. And then the Federal uh, Legislative Council uh, at that time consists of 75 members, uh, three uh, ex officials, 11 from Malay states and the state settlements, uh, 11 British Council, uh, British officers and 50 unofficial members. This is the first time of the Legislative Council had two third uh, unofficial majority. Eh? The agreement uh, uh, was another step taken by British to formulate the basic principles of government with parliament. And then I go to functions of legislature. The function uh, actually, uh, there is uh, uh, the, uh, sorry, function of legislature is to formulate, uh, is to formulate law. Uh, but in actual uh, practice, uh, not only uh, to formulate law, but uh, to amend the existing cons uh, constitution uh, in, and also financial aspect, representation, and uh, interest and interpolation. Next, uh, Parliament act actually acting as a legislative authority, which plays the role of for initial making 
and amending the existing laws before the law could be um, enforced to public. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I go to I skip to the types of legislature. Okay, there is two type of uh, legislature. Uh, first is unicameral. Um, unicameral is a, pra uh, a practice of having single legislative uh, or parliamentary chamber. Uh, this uh, unicameral legislature consists of only one chamber or house. The concept of uh, unicameral legislation is uh, that exists when there is no widely perceived or need for multicameralism. Many multicameral legislation were created to give separate voice uh, to different sector of society. Uh, multiple term, uh, some, uh, you can see in the parliament of uh, uh, example in New Zealand and Denmark, Unicameralism comes about the evolution, uh, uh, the sample of unicameral uh, chamber. Okay, uh, we talked about uh, the bicameral. Bicameralism is actually distinguished from unicameral, uh, in which all members deliberate and vote as a single, um, single group. By, uh, bicameral legislation has legislators in two separate assemblies uh, or chamber or house. Um, in uh, as of 2015, 40% uh, of the world na uh, national legislature are bicameral. 60% uh, opted to unicameral. Uh, often. Okay, members of two chambers are uh, elected uh, or selected in different methods, eh, which vary from countries to countries. I uh, go to the uh, topic on bicameral system as practice in Malaysia. Ever since the general election, uh, first general election held uh, on uh, Wednesday, like 19 August 1959. Uh, that is up the, after the uh, our independence on 31st December 1957. The this is the first uh, parliament of Malaysia. Uh, for that, that time, uh, known as Federation of Malaya. Malaysia formed its own uh, national legislation system with bicameral as the legislation uh, as a legislation system. Malay, Malaysian opted uh, uh, parliamentary democracy, uh, democracy with constitutional monarchy uh, and he, His Majesty the Yang Di Pertuan Agong is the parliament ruler, uh, the symbol of sovereignty uh, and, the, and he is also the head of religion of Islam as provided uh, in a federal constitution. Uh. The federal constitution uh, is uh, earlier established uh, uh, right after uh, Malaysia gained its uh, independence in on 31st August 1957. Uh, I go to a uh, definition about the uh, parliament. Okay, parliament uh, according uh, our legislation is more modern in accordance to when uh, Westminster system, the system of government where, where the system of government is called parliament. The word parliament is uh, actually derived from the French word parliament uh, that refers to talk, a talk, a discussion, uh, a meeting, assembly of court where people discuss matters. Lah. Parliament actually typically function under uh, uh, system government organized according, according to principle of fusion of power, fusion of power, a system uh, in which uh, the executive is accountable to the parliament. Um, okay. 
Okay, Malaysia since independent opted the democratic form of government where um, uh, parliament of uh, where uh, people's uh, aspiration reflected through elected uh, representative in the parliament. The parliament of Malaysia actually consists of the uh, federal level and state level where by camera in, on the state uh, on the federal level sorry uni camera on at the state level um, the house of representative or lower house uh, uh, in Malaysia is called Dewan Rakyat the uh, senate or upper house uh, is called uh, Dewan Negara okay uh, we go to the membership of um, our parliament, uh, our legislative body consists of three components. Uh, that is the, uh, I'm sorry, sorry. Parliament of Malaysia is the highest uh, legislative body in uh, which consists of three components, which is uh, uh, the uh, His Majesty, the House of House of Representative, and the Senate. Uh, his Majesty uh, under uh, under uh, Federal Constitution Article Fifty Five uh, can summon for Parliament to be in session. Uh, he has the uh, uh, absolute power to pro for for or dissolve the Parliament. Therefore, uh, His Majesty uh, is best, uh, his power is based upon the constitution um, and um, uh, the power I'm sorry the king is vested upon the uh, upon by the constitution to summon for the parliament to meet six months between last proceeding in the last session and the date of uh, appointment for its first proceeding in the next session uh, we go to Dewan Negara uh, Dewan Negara uh, consists of 70 members uh, known as Senators. Uh, the Senators are uh, actually a pitch or draw, drawn from ranks of persons who rendered distinguished uh, public services and have achieved distinction in their profession, for, uh, whether in commerce, industry, agriculture, cultural activities or social services and uh, they are also representative of racial minorities or or they are also capable of representing the interests of uh, the orang asli and then the house of representative uh, consists of 222 elected members each member represents the parliamentary constitution uh, whereby in a general election uh, uh, that is uh, held uh, every five years elect to elect the members of the uh, of the House of Representatives, and then parties uh, which the most elected members can form a federal government to rule the country. Uh, we go to the appointment uh, of Dewan Negara, members of Dewan Negara. Okay. Uh, the appointment made up for uh, in two ways whether 26 members will be appointed uh, where 26 members will be appointed by the state legislative assembly uh, to represent 13 states and uh, each uh, state represented by two members uh, another 44 will be appointed by our uh, the his majesty the king on the advice of the Prime Minister, uh, including uh, the appointment is two members from Federal Territory Kuala Lumpur, one member from Federal Territory Labuan and one member each from Federal Territory of Labuan and Putrajaya. Uh, the appointment shall uh, be based on the eligibility that uh, in compliance with the uh, following criteria that is one number one is uh, must be a Malaysian citizen, second, a uh, person with sound mind, third, person aged not more than 30 years, and fourth, uh, the person who is not undischarged bankrupt. 
Nah, actually the tenor of uh, of this uh, is uh, three year three years term, uh, maximum for two terms, applicable uh, to both federal and state appointments. The life of the Senate is not affected by the dissolution of uh, Parliament. Uh, senators are drawn from the ranks of person who have rendered distinguished public services and have achieved this thing of uh, in profession eh? that I say comma in whether in commerce industrial uh, agriculture cultural activities or social services uh, uh, representative of racial minorities or capable of repre uh, representing the interests of the aura asli Okay, uh, every member of this Senate uh, before, take, uh, be, before taking his seat uh, shall, uh, uh, shall take, uh, take, take, uh, shall take the prescribed oath before the President of the Senate. By the oath, the members swear and affirm that they will faithful discharging their duties. Uh, and then we go to the House of Representatives that is elected through general election, where it, uh, the general election is held uh, every five years to appoint the elected candidate, uh, comprising of 20, uh, 222 members. Each member represents uh, a parliamentary, parliamentary constitution, constituency, sorry, constituency. Constitution C. So uh, the parties with the most uh, elected uh, members can form the federal government to rule the country. And then the their appointment uh, <coughs> on the eligibility uh, uh, of different criteria that is one must be a Malaysian citizen, second, uh, a person not uh, aged not less than 18 years old. Third, person with sound mind. Uh, fourth, uh, person who is not undischarged bankrupt. And the, lastly, person who is not as, at the same time member of both houses. Okay. Uh, mungkin saya boleh. saya nak pergi kepada isu sekejap. Okey, sikit. Ah, ah boleh boleh boleh. Boleh. Okey, uh, ah repak sikit. Okay. Ah, ah, among the issues. Dah, dah. Okay. On, okay. Among the issues that uh, that uh, concerning the bicameral uh, bicameral system in Malaysia is the uh, about this uh, upper chamber uh, Dewan Negara where uh, issues on check and balance in the Senate. Actually, um, the Speaker of Senate uh, uh, has expressed his uh, view regarding this uh, reform, uh, regarding the, uh, the, the, the issue of performing check and balance on the executive because uh, the the yeah, appointment is uh, by the main, uh, by the uh, minister. So, um, uh, question arise when uh, how can the Senate perform uh, and balance? Uh, Datuk Professor Dr. Salim Buang has uh, commented uh, in 2018 relating to the feasible of the uh, chamber uh, because the, under under certain uh, events uh, that the state legislature uh, sorry the, uh, or okay. The, the, he yeah, compared the camera system in Malaysia. Yeah? Habiskan. Habiskan sentence tu. 
Okay. Okay, they compare the uh, bicameral system in the country uh, where his finding in UK, which is weak uh, the, uh, in terms of form of bicameralism, where cha one chamber enjoys superior legislative power uh, and the rules of upper chamber is merely consultative. Lah. That's all. That's all. For conclusion, uh, uh, legislative body is the superior among the uh, organ, organs of the uh, other organs in the government. Uh, the significant legislative power lies uh, on both a House of Parliamentary and a House of Representative and the Senate. Thank you. Thank you so much. So kita nak jemput last uh, presenter ya, yeah? last live presenter uh, Mia. Assalamualaikum and good morning. Uh, my name is Tuan Samia. So I would like to present for question seven. Other than political party, there is pressure group uh, that uh, important groups or organization that form to represent people in political issues. So uh, I would like to discuss about the type of pressure groups and uh, the method they use to influence the policy maker. So firstly, uh, I will talk about the definition. So, um, pressure, pressure groups also uh, called interest groups uh, also can be defined as an organized group which attempt to influence government decisions without seeking itself to exercise the formal powers of government. And in other version, uh, they also define as the collective individuals whose members wants to influence the laws. Uh, pressure groups also can be described as any organized groups that does not seek power of gov or government but looks to influence the government policy. Uh, so, origin of the pressure groups, um, this pressure group arise when the spe specialization in the, in the society increase. They arise to promote uh, idea, advice or specialized knowledge of their groups. The rapidly expanding population of the voters led to a sharp increase in the demand for local public goods also became a factor. And, and besides the creation of many bureaus in the legislatures also inspired individuals to form pressure groups and try to influence national legislation relation to the bureaus. Uh, next, improvement in the communication technology also greatly aided the formation of pressure groups because media has reduced the cost of identifying a common interest and making it easier to collect uh, to collect decisions and lastly uh, the economic depression um, the tension caused by the economic depressions is in a country has led to the establishment of a pressure groups um, <coughs> next is the type of pressure groups uh, there are four types of pressure groups. Uh, one is associational groups, non-associational groups, institutional groups, and anomic groups. The first one, uh, they are formally organized, which articulate or share interests of their members over a long period of time. Uh, they were trying to achieve the specific and particular objectives of their members. Uh, they also called promotional groups, protective groups, or functional groups or professional groups. Uh, this type of group is uh, promotes economics and vocational interests, public, or public interests or single issues or protect and safeguard the interests of their members. Uh, this type of groups also have a distinctive name, uh, national headquarters and professional employees. Uh, they also use effective procedures to pursue their interests. Uh, they, uh, they include business, industrial, trade association, labor unions, professional association, and farmers groups. The next is uh, non-associational -associ group. This type of group does not have name or lack uh, of formal structures. However, they, all, 
they are aware of their own distinctiveness from their from other because they were possessed by a similar characteristics and interests. Uh, they also have a feeling uh, of their own identity, but they reflect largely unarticulated social, ethnic, cultural, or religious interests. The best example of these groups are unemployed in individuals, members of particular religious or ethnic groups, or normative groups of all non-smokers. Although they may not currently be organized, they could become powerfully organized politically groups under right and appropriate this appropriate circumstance. These groups uh, present in every society and at times they may form temporary, loosely structured organizations to plan and coordinate political activity in an informal way with regard to a particular issue. Then they will dis disappear when the issue is no longer pressing. However, uh, if this group becomes more formalized and enduring, it is changed to an associational interest groups. Uh, next is uh, inter institutional groups. Uh, these groups uh, exist uh, within the government, uh, and this group has its specific function and activities, and always being monitored by the government. Uh, they are well established, such as government government bureaucracies, members of armed forces, and members of parliament. Uh, they have vested interests and they lobby from the inside, often out of public sites. The purpose of these groups are to implement and to e execute government policies, to become the, the center for public meeting as well, and to act upon certain matters in relation to nation development these are relative dear, sorry sorry these are relatively relatively well structured from formal and during organizations with table membership clear objectives and in-depth knowledge of all the sectors of government and their clients they are established for purpose other than political activity as they are part of government department or agencies the last one uh, is enemy groups. This group born where people strongly oppose specific policies. Enemy means a sense of separation from social norms such as without any pre-planning or organization when the people wants to show their disappointment about the particular government policy that groups of people is called enemy pressure groups. In Malaysia, such as a formation of a group of Malaysian during the 13th May 19... 69 riyos. Okay, um, the next is the method they use to influence the policy mo policy maker. The first one is approaching judiciary. This method they deal with the courts mostly, um, especially when the court is supreme. Class of action is a type of lawsuit where one of the parties is a group of people who are represented collectively by a member of people who are represented collectively by a member of that group. Friend of the court assists the court with custody, parenting time, and child support issues. Another other thing, the friend of the court investigates and makes recommendations about custody, parenting time, child support, and medical support. They also help parents to settle disputes during and after their case. The next is demonstra demonstration of picketing. Picketing means any individual or group or individual that making a public display or demonstration of sentiment for, for or against a cause or a person that including protesting, which may include the distribution of leaflets or handbills, the display of signs or posters, and any oral communication or speech, which may involve an effort to persuade or influence, influence including all expressive and symbolic conduct, whether it is active or passive. Uh, the next is uh, lobbying. To lobby successfully, usually they deal with money. Uh, firstly, they need to lobby the legislative branch, 
um, by spending hundreds of million dollars a year to lobby the members of Congress on a range of issues. Then they try to affect the legislation being generated in the Congress. Sometimes lobbyists speak with the Congress people directly and they also testify at congressional hearings. The Senate uh, published ethics guidelines to explain the complex federal laws that govern the interaction among the Congress people and the lobbyists. In lobbying, uh, the, the executive branch these pressure groups target regularly agencies which have the ability to set the policy affecting commerce and trade throughout the country for lobbying judicial, for lobbying judicial branch pressure groups needs to work uh, to influence the courts in a number of ways they often file the friend of the court presenting an agreement in favor of a particular issue sometimes they also file lawsuits against the government or other parties so uh, last one is the conclusion. Uh, I guess uh, for the method of the to influence the policy, I guess so many, but I, I just choose three only. So for the conclusion, uh, as a final observation, we can say that pressure groups are important as well as the politi political groups. Uh, they both have the same aim that representing the people to achieve uh, their own benefit. Uh, both uh, of political groups and pressure groups, uh, they there be the voice for the people to speak to the government. Uh, that is to say that uh, pressure group ni gives more benefit as well as political groups. They did provide expert information, advice, framework for, for public to polit participate in politics, define and focus public attention on issues and get them to the political agenda. And, and lastly, they reflect the amount of public consent for government policies. Uh, Miss, I think that's all. Thank you so much, uh, Nia. Okay. So, uh, ada question tak untuk uh, Nia? Tak ada eh? So, kita ada lagi uh, baki lima minit sebelum kita, uh, kelas kita habis. So, untuk the five, uh, last five minutes ni, um, uh, I would like to um, briefing lah pasal final exam ni. So kita punya paper akan masuk pada hari pada 11 hari bulan 8 uh, Kertas akan start uh, dibuka daripada pukul 8 pagi sampai 5 petang uh, Jadinya uh, Miss hilang Miss hilang Miss hilang Miss missing Siapa dah main jampi ni woy Where are you miss Ada orang berselop Miss ada lagi ke Dah habis ke masa Cui kasih jampi Miss datang balik dah terus hilang ni Mana pergi Itulah Miss hilang tiba-tiba hilang Kejap lagi terus hilang Sedia apa Akan berhenti lah Pakai drone, pakai drone ke, ah, ni, ke sana Drone, drone, drone Berhenti dah <laughs> Aku tak dekat ni sekarang top dulu Top dulu Betul Baru pergi dah Betul Mana Miss ni hilang dia nak sedar Hai Hai 
Budak jarang buka kamera ni. <laughs> eh, ni satu dalam ni? Rajin mandi ya, hari ni. Tak ada, dia no. terlalu. Terlalu tak mandi lah. Tak, tak mandi lah.
Ah uh, boleh terus bagi soalan tak? Kita tak nak bermasa. Ya lah kita kan 10.45. Boleh terus soalan. Hmm. Terus ajukan tak tanya kamera buka. Hmm. Masa itu kamera buka ke? Ya Zan. Itu masa itu kamera buka kan? Kita nanti dulu. Kan 45 tu kalau 5 o'clock, kalau 5 o'clock dia konti pasal kamera tu Kurang jelas Syuk eh tak dengar Eh type, type, type Ah tu dah, dah type dah, masa exam Mas perlu buka kamera kan? exam Allah wabar, ok untuk final exam kita, kita tak ke online, online macam ni Tak perlu, tak perlu Ok Ah uh, Kita akan buat uh, final exam nanti, you jawab macam you jawab item tadi tu. Okey. Okey, okay. not that. Saya dulu tak mau cerita. Saya miss. Apa apa tak apa. Okey. Ah uh, so saya nak hike. Um so, uh, Sorry Isha tak dengar. Untuk tulis tangan boleh ke untuk jawab tu? Boleh tak ada masalah. Maksud uh, you Henry Tan? Henry Tan, saya tak ada masalah Henry Tan. Boleh, boleh tapi oh, make sure you scan lah. Ya, ya, faham. Scan and then you attach. Scan attach. Ah, ah, boleh. Dia sama, dia, dia sama je. Macam hari tu you all ambil main test kan. Yeah. Sama ada you boleh comment dekat comment dari bar. Ataupun you nak tie masuk dalam words Ataupun you nak hand return Then you scan, you attach sahaja mm -hmm. Okay No set mm. Tak ada masalah ya uh, Jangan uh, Tak apa saya akan share soalan kat dalam WhatsApp group So dia boleh uh, Rujuk soalan kat dalam WhatsApp And then submission tu yang lebih penting Submission tu buat dalam future So um, Ada apa lagi soalan tak? Masa exam perlu buka camera ke? Tak perlu tak ada. Tak ada damage, beres. Beres, okey. Semua okey. Chapter, chapter memang daripada chapter 1 sampai chapter 8 akan masuk. So, so untuk chapter 8 saya akan buat video lecture hmm. pada minggu depan lah. So minggu, lep, uh, minggu depan bukan minggu terakhir eh, untuk semester, semester ni. Hmm. Okey. Ada apa-apa soalan lagi tak? Ya ada. Ada soalan. Okey. Tadi tak dengar ya. Okey saya nak ucapkan terima kasih a uh, atas kerjasama. Ya. Yeah. Miss a uh, video orang seorang dulu ke? Thank you miss. Thank you miss. Thank you, miss. Terima kasih atas kerjasama untuk semua. Okey. Thank you miss. Boleh tak? So kalau ada apa lah boleh WhatsApp ya. Bye, bye. Uh, miss Kita dah memang betul-betul ah. behind the schedule dah Miss ada okay, satu miss. lagi dia. Sebelum Miss turn okay, orang ada something you. untuk Miss Okay Okay uh, Saya turn ramai-ramai Ready ya Satu, dua, tiga Kita tak dah alam Thank you miss. Thank you very much miss. Thank you miss. Thank you miss. Thank you miss. Boleh 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 kita selut. Lepas tu kan. Wow. Thank you. Patutlah dia beri selut. Thank you. Thank you miss. Mak tahu sekarang. Okay. Dan dan. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so Thank you. So, uh, buat yang terbaik eh. Buat yang terbaik. Hmm. Okay, terima kasih. Terima kasih semua. Minta halalkan segala yang sebenarnya. Tak ada apa pun. Saya kat sini, saya dia orang tengah je. Okay. <laughs>
Boleh tolak kalau ada pressure miss saja kita nak tiga. Harap-harap sem depan ni sajar lagi. Hmm. Faham lah kalau oh. sajar. <laughs> All best ya eh, semua. Uh, ya, tak ada. Saya tak ada kot. Alamak. <laughs> ya. So, apa-apa apa -apa soalan kita boleh uh, uh, ni eh, berhubung dekat WhatsApp eh. WhatsApp group eh. No so, problem. Uh, terima kasih. So, itu sahaja untuk kelas pada hari ni. Uh, saya akhiri kelas ni uh, dengan ucapan uh, terima kasih, Assalamualaikum dan uh, selamat sejahtera lah semua. Stay safe. Thank Bye. You, Thank, you. Thank, you Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Alright. See you guys. Okay, next class. <laughs>